This is the uh, Kobe Bryant film room. Episode five, part three. Hellified cap, media flunky edition. Doing your thing, but also you two, both you and Shaq, could have worked better together as teammates and made sure that you kept that bump. So he's putting this squarely on the shoulders of Kobe? And why didn't it work out? Okay. On tight and together as opposed to severing it. I think that gets held against Kobe, and that's why he falls out of the top five. So Kobe is most like Jordan in terms of his game, his size, his position, everything. But LeBron is closest to Jordan in terms of value. What do you mean he puts us in the value? He, he's, he's, he's going to be higher on the all-time list. He didn't even explain that shit. <laughs> you see how he just said he's just going to be a... I guess you got to write that in the storyline, right? <laughs> I was waiting. I was like, shit, he about to explain this shit. Okay. And then he came up with, with, with look, look at this shit, right? Did, is it just me? Or... But LeBron is closest to Jordan in terms of value. What do you mean he puts us in the value? He, he's, he's, he's going to be higher on the all-time list. His he said that as if like, his bosses told him that shit from the back. You had to pick one or the other. You're starting a team. You're going to take LeBron. As you point out, a lot of that has to do with LeBron's superior size, which is true. He's six foot eight, two hundred fifty. You could take whoever the fuck you want. That's not the point of this video, really. Uh, you, if you value size, speed, athleticism, um, great passing, pick LeBron. If you value defense, uh, the the full bag, the uh, more of a winning culture. And that's one thing they don't explain either. Culture. Um, Kobe's built winning cultures. And they don't uh, talk about that when they talk about his impact. It's very weird. Plus, but it also has to do with the efficiency in scoring. LeBron's an incredibly efficient scorer. And also... And, and see, I guess if they start repeating this shit, uh, the... the uh, Lazy fans who just read stats or just keep repeating that point that the media keeps repeating. This is how you brainwash people. You keep saying the same shit over and over again. And they have everybody all on one accord doing it. Defense, because LeBron defense improved throughout his career to the point where he could guard effectively all five positions. He's almost like a Dennis Rodman kind of figure at his height. Almost like Dennis Rodman. value and in addition to all that he has the passing game of a, of a magic or a bird. okay so the defensive value is fucking cap because even if you want to consider everything that Matt Kellerman said Kobe's still a 12 all NBA defender uh defending honors right so even if you want to consider all this shit all the sprinkle that Max Kellerman put on that Kobe Bryant's still a better defender the kind of passing game, the genius for passing that Kobe doesn't have. So I'm talking about in value, the, the one who brings you the most wins or the closest to a champion. Okay, so let's talk about value, right? Uh, Kobe stayed on the losing team, and they traded Kwame Brown and Mark Gasol for uh, Pau Gasol, right? A guy who made one all-star team, right? Uh the value of LeBron, we'll see. He made it to the uh, Eastern Con the, the NBA Finals one time in 2007. Literally four years later, he left and went to Miami, right? So if you're talking about building a team around a person, right? And how difficult it is to build a team around one person, right? You would have to pick Kobe because LeBron will leave that team. History shows he had to leave that team in order to win for another franchise. Chip all by himself. The one who fits in best on the most different kinds of teams. And, and let me address this all by himself shit. Nobody wins by themselves. You need help. Everyone needs help. But the problem is, the problem with these guys is they're double-tongued. And one aspect, LeBron doesn't have enough help. 
And then the other aspect is he could do it all by himself. The, the logic, listen, the logic doesn't work. You can't use both arguments. Either he has help or he doesn't. If he can't do it by himself, then don't, don't say he could do it all by himself. You know, I had a dude that worked, that worked with me. He said, man, LeBron, if he uh, went to the Charlotte Hornets, he could lead that franchise to a championship. Really? Y'all believe that shit, man? There's, okay, so the Eastern Conference, you got to go through Giannis and the Bucks, Miami, even Philly, uh, even though Philly's in, in uh, a little bit of disarray, right? Uh, New York's starting to come up. You got teams like that who have better basketball players on them, right? <clears throat> but he wants you to believe with a uh, uh, inconsistent, injury-prone uh, LaMelo Ball that he's just going to lead the Charlotte Hornets to a championship. And this is the type of fairy tale shit these niggas actually believe. The one who's going to be ranked higher on the all-time list, value. Jordan's one, and the question is, where does everyone fit else fit in? LeBron is going to end his career as the first non-big you mentioned after Jordan, and Kobe will fit in with Bird and Magic somewhere below that. Kobe had <laughs> a much better arsenal, a more varied arsenal of ways to score. But you could say LeBron is the better scorer. LeBron averaged more points per game. How is... How is having a better arsenal less than the person who doesn't have the better arsenal, right? You talk about scoring, and this is this is a basketball talk, right? The reason why LeBron struggles when he gets to the finals is not because he's not great. It's because he doesn't really have a go-to move, right? So teams are able to key in and block off the basket. Usually if they have a, a great defensive big with size and athleticism, and then they have good perimeter defenders, they can wall off the basket from LeBron. And usually you can see that zone defense bothers him because he's not great. He's not a great, despite what these, these fools tell you, he's not a great outside shooter, right? And the statistics prove that. Hey, Kobe's 25 for his career, LeBron 27. LeBron far more efficient. That's not even, that's one of the... the in, in what way, though? In what situations, though? Right? So is he efficient in the mid-range? No. Is he efficient at free throw line, more efficient at the free throw line? No. And so these are major, uh, when the game breaks down and you need to get a bucket, and we've seen this in the Denver series, Right? That pull-up mid-range comes in handy, right? That Kobe Bryant bag comes in handy down the stretch of games where defenses get real tight, right? Not saying LeBron can't ever hit a mid-range shot. Pretty sure he hit a mid-range jumper uh, in the clutch before, right? But he's not consistent with it. The key is consistency. I think Kobe Bryant shoots 45% from mid-range, right? You would use to go against Kobe. He never even shot 47% from the floor. No. And he keeps repeating this. And that's eight years with Shaq. Oh. Double and triple take. And I'm not But he's not going to tell you. It, it, see, he what he moved. He moved the. Uh, he acts as if Shaq's going to make you a better shooter. First of all, Kobe was shooting a lot of jump shots, right? Uh, Kobe commanded double teams. So they're acting as if he's just standing wide open and no one on him. The, the the defense in the in the uh, 2000s was way more difficult than the defenses LeBron faced way later on, right? And <clears throat> LeBron had three point shooters around him, giving him more space. Um, he needs those shooters to open up the lane so he can get through. These are basketball dynamics that these guys don't go into. They just got their pieces of paper and their coffee, and they just talk big shit. Whoever told them to read this stuff, somebody dressed these guys real well, though. But they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And if LeBron had Shaq. Tear down and Kobe. I'm just saying that's the difference with him and LeBron. What, let's, let's just say for the sake of argument, LeBron James, with his game, the way he is, he gets nine years of prime Shaq. What we so <laughs> the conversation down low says, uh, L.A. Lakers retires both Kobe's jerseys, and it was well-deserved, right? Steve Kerr calls Kobe the closest thing to MJ. 
agree that Kobe's game is similar to Jordan than LeBron's. It is. Let's, you should. The segment should be over. <laughs> Wait, we know what these guys say. They're going to stretch your shit out. So this is a stupid argument, right? So he's just shouting the fact that to, to, um, LeBron, he's just thinking about the greatness of LeBron. And this is a problem. He's not thinking how people fit in basketball-wise. The lane would be fucking clogged because teams would know that LeBron's not a consistent jump shooter. Great teams would key in on Shaq. And the reason why Shaq and Kobe worked is because Kobe was super clutch at the time, right? Kobe was super clutch and he was skilled. He could shoot the mid-range, he could post up, he could shoot the three. He had handles. So the fact that people just say this because of the name LeBron James, but they're not thinking of how their games fit. Back then, LeBron James had to learn how to win in the closed games. He struggled closing games. We watch this shit, right? But now they're trying to say with like those games in the Western Conference were real close. They were real close. Shaq would, LeBron and Shaq wouldn't just run over the opposition the whole fucking game. There would be a spacing issue, which is why LeBron needs a big to shoot now in today's NBA to open up the lane for him. It's the same reason why him and Russ did not work. Because they both have the same game attacking the basket. Shaq is not going to space out the floor and the defense wasn't going to be as great on the perimeter. So they're not factoring this shit in. They're just saying, oh, LeBron James is a, is a great passer. So therefore, nine championships. This is some dumb shit. They're not, they don't factor in how people fit. But then when they don't work, they say, oh, well, they didn't fit, skip. Three, in his palace in Cleveland, we'll remember there. Yeah. Three, 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 three. And what happened? You have a chance to turn it into a series, right? Okay, and you've man, got the ball. The, you've got the ball in your hands <laughs> with a minute and a half to and you're up four in your house. How can you not close? What do you think Kobe would have done at that moment? What do you think Michael would have done? Well, he, I'm betting on them. I'm not betting on LeBron. When did Kobe do that in the finals? I mean, he just pointed out the Pistons, and you had Shaq there. Uh, the Pistons are one of, probably the greatest defensive team ever. Number one. Number two, he's just calculating. And see, what these guys do is they, they, they think players are supposed to win alone. I just said earlier that nobody wins a championship by themselves. Kobe and Shaq, that's two niggas. What about the other? What about the 15 man roster? What about uh, the role players, sir? Uh, did they have Rick Fox? Did they have Gary, uh, 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 Carl Malone? All right, then he's not looking at the, the actual matchups. He's just saying they were supposed to win. Just just because you say they were supposed to win doesn't mean they were supposed to win. LeBron used to demolish those same pistons. And that's that's called a misleading fact, right? Because although LeBron had great series against the Pistons, it wasn't the same Ben Wallace Pistons. And that makes a huge difference because Ben Wallace is one of the greatest defensive forces the NBA has ever seen. So once you get past the initial defender, which LeBron will, any great player will, they have to meet Big Ben at the paint. And it didn't turn out so well. Guys' shots was being thrown to outer space back then. 48 points, 29 out of 30, 25 straight. That, he's just Tayshaun reading Prince. numbers. Kobe didn't destroy Tayshaun Prince like that. Okay, but you know what's happening. Actually, Kobe did destroy Tayshaun Prince like that. Uh, just not in that series, right? This, this series was based on matchups, right? Double teams, triple teams. If you go back and watch how they guarded Kobe, they walled him off with using his own defense. Between Shaq and Kobe. What they have to make that happen. <laughs> I was covering that series. They got to a point where they just had to make up. I know. Because they, they were the trying to salvage game. the series. I know. It was, it was terrible. It was, was it the all-time letdown? 
It was an underachievement, I guess, in the aspect of the team, but him and Shaq probably wouldn't have gotten that fucking far. <laughs> they would have had a great relationship. <laughs> These guys think LeBron walked into the league, the league clutch, man. He had a lot to learn, and Miami taught him how to win. Right? We know what happened in game four against the Celtics. They were up 24. The Lakers, Kobe, came for and Staples. They were up 24 and lost. Mm -hmm. In game six, okay. biggest final deficit, 39 points. That is what true. That is true. We got our ass whooped. No excuse. Remember it like yesterday. Who do you want with the ball in his hand at the end of a game? With LeBron, the game on the line. LeBron, you do not want LeBron. LeBron, 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 LeBron has a good ability of getting mad. Mad LeBron, 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 LeBron not mad is better than mad Kobe. You hear this shit? That's what you call hyperbole, bro. This dude just... Oh, just because a player is mad doesn't make him play better or worse. LeBron not mad is better. What, what type of breakdown is this? These guys are supposed to be analysts. Brian, five titles. LeBron, three. Kobe, two. Shaq, one. MVPs, regular season. MVPs, the ones that the awards that they vote for that they can't wait to get to give to LeBron. By the way, I'm going to do a series uh, next about Rachel Nichols and this very uh, subject right here. And I'm going to show you why I don't give a fuck about uh, uh, MVPs. Right. And I'm going to show you how they have different standards for the people that they like. I'm James Ford. Kobe Bryant won. LeBron James is one of five men that's won four or more MVPs. He's one of two men that win two in two different locations. He won two and two Cleveland and Miami. Kareem is three and three Milwaukee and the Lakers. You give that to who? LeBron. Right. Okay. He's excited Bye. over that shit. He's like, yeah, we gave LeBron these awards so that we can use them against Kobe. MVP. LeBron has three. Kobe has two. And see, he's not going to into it see if it was LeBron it'd be all the context in the world. Well he deserved those championships. He was Rob Skill. But when there's Kobe it's like oh he doesn't have any. But he knows that Kobe should have more MVPs. LeBron James has led his team in scoring every year, 14 years in a row. Kobe Bryant did not lead his team in scoring the first year until year seven. Check check LeBron. He didn't lead So he, again uh having a guy like Shaq on the team, or having a, a player of talent and abilities uh, uh, who could score, right? That takes away from uh, your shot attempts because you're trying to fucking win, which is the point of the game. And uh, <clears throat> you have to sacrifice to a certain degree. You have to play a certain way. We as the Lakers played inside out because we had a dominant big. Kobe was dominating from the outside. But that was the dynamic of the team. He's just talking about LeBron just scoring all these points, but they were empty calories because they weren't resulting in winning championships. So I don't know how you can sit there and just read that shit off as if it doesn't matter. I don't it's get it. To yourself. LeBron James been in the league 14 years. Well, Shaq was there. Well, <gasps> Okay, so here's the thing, right? Kobe also didn't start. Here's another fact, right? Kobe didn't start right away, right? He had to go through uh, a coach in Dell Harris that didn't believe in playing young players. Plus, he had an all-star in front of him, right? Uh, if Kobe would have had the same start as LeBron and as Michael Jordan, he would have broke the all-time scoring record. If he wasn't on the team with Shaquille O'Neal, he would have scored more. He actually held his game back from breaking records, scoring records, in order to win with Shaq. Oh, that's my point. This is documented. So, all the words are now, that's what. Okay. okay. So, words, hold on. So, now you're telling me that Kobe Bryant played with a great player. So, if LeBron plays with Shaq, they have less than five, they have less than Why five. did they do this? Why do they try to, they keep trying this argument because they know that the stupid ass fans, they'll look at, they'll look at LeBron 
at in Miami. And they say, oh, well, he was tearing through the league. He was tearing through the league with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Right? He was tearing through the league with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. He was tearing through the league with Anthony Davis. Right? But back then, he didn't he wasn't as developed as he is now. His jump shot was iffy, which is why teams gave him space and guarded him at the free throw line. His defense wasn't great in those early calf years. They weren't. He wasn't considered a clutch player. Matter of fact, some of these people from these same networks, Stephen A. Smith, called LeBron a choke artist. That's how bad it was. There was jokes about him not showing up in the fourth quarter, saying if you had a dollar, something with a dollar that uh, LeBron James would, would only come up with 75 cents or some shit. They were, they were criticizing him in the clutch. Right, so now they we want to revise history and add a, a, a more complete LeBron James with Shaq. Remember, Kobe Bryant was only 20, 21 years old when he was winning championships. Right, and if you compare a young Kobe Bryant and what he was doing against the Spurs and what LeBron did against the Spurs, it's two different things. Oh, they have more. The, the, the guy that people are saying is the best player on the planet revealed himself to be the mentally weakest superstar we've ever seen. Would that have been Kobe? Would Kobe have allowed that to happen in an NBA Finals? No, Kobe, you know and I know Kobe, it would not have happened. Kobe, we just blew a 3 1 lead to Phoenix. And, oh, and, 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 oh. and so, if, if that was LeBron, right? When LeBron lost to the Warriors, it's not fair. But with Kobe, right? He blew a 3 1 lead. But Shannon's not going to go into who Kobe had on that team, right? Because him himself in the future, I know this is a while ago, y'all, but in the future, he goes at Kwame Brown, calling him sorry. Basically calling them trash. Shout out to Kwame Brown too. But this guy, they, they have all this context when it comes to LeBron, but none when it comes to Kobe, right? Uh, they say that, uh, Lamar, Kobe with Lamar Odom was supposed to beat Phoenix when they have Steve Nash, Sean Marion, and Amari Stoudemire, sir. Yes, he had him up 3-1, but that was because he, he was he was going off. You know, dur during the course of a series, teams adjust, Shannon. And they realize that, look, we're going to put his teammates and, and Kobe's going to need his teammates in order to win. So Kobe started trying to pass the ball more to get his teammates involved. And Phil Jackson told him to. It was a strategy. He was willing to try different strategies to try to win the fucking game. If he wanted his stats, he could have got more stats. You know, I found out this is why Michael likes Kobe. Because both of them know what it's like to lose in the first round. LeBron James. Okay, so losing in the first round, right? LeBron didn't even make the playoffs his first two years in Cleveland, right? In 2021, he uh, got swept in the first round versus the Phoenix Suns. 2022, I don't even think, they didn't even make the play-in. Now imagine this, right? There was no play-in tournament when Kobe played, right? If there was a play-in tournament, the Lakers probably would have made the playoffs, right? But this is the bullshit we had, we had left to deal with, right? If Michael Jordan had a play-in tournament, he'd probably win every championship. <laughs> That's a little bit of cap, right? Hella cap, right? Uh, but he would win, I think he would win more, right? If there was a play-in tournament, right? So. They didn't have the luxury of having this cushion of if you didn't do your job during the regular season, you could somehow squeeze your ass in later on. And doesn't know what that's like. Mm -hmm. He's never known what it's like to lose in the first round. You think that because he didn't make the playoffs, and he actually did lose in the first round. He he doesn't know this at that time, but he actually does lose in the first round, which is pretty hilarious.
Well, he would have stood for losing six miles because I got to tell you, Kobe can't get there. Kobe can't get there. Kobe can't get there. He went to seven NBA finals and won five. Okay, he can't get there. 2001, 2002, the Lakers won the uh, NBA finals. Who was uh, the MVP of those finals? Do you think Kobe Bryant would have needed Ray Allen to save his legacy? No, he, he would have saved his legacy. He needed Shaq and Powell Gasol. Uh, oh! So now Powell Gasol is the savior of the Kobe's legacy, right? Instead of saying that Kobe took that team and won with that team, Pau Gasol is now a, a, a fucking savior. Nobody was thinking about Pau Gasol winning any type of shit before he even got with Kobe. Matter of fact, that year, the Lakers were number one in the West before they got Pau Gasol in a deep West ran by Phoenix and San Antonio, sir. Uh, so I'm just trying wait, to... Wait, did Shaq get a game winner? And, and this is the funny part because LeBron went to South Beach because he couldn't beat the Celtics. So what was LeBron doing before Dwayne Wade? <laughs> he just asked that. He just, he just asked that. Can I ask you a question? Of all of LeBron's teammates, which one of them is better than Shaq? See, when people. When okay, they, well, all of, LeBron, all of Kobe's teammates. <laughs> you know, which one's better than Dwayne Wade besides on the, on the Pau Gasol teams? And uh, uh, LeBron's teammates are usually a combination of two or more superstars, sir. So yes, two are greater than one. Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade combined give you more than just Shaq. Generally, to LeBron, they take his top total body of work. But when you try to make your argument for Kobe, you pick up in 2002. But those seven years before that, they occurred. So talk about that. We actually don't. We take his whole career into consideration in context. But see, what you would like to do is you like to judge a 17-year-old or 18 year old earlier on who was on the bench, who his coach wasn't playing. He had no say so in that, sir. And he even made the all-star team off the bench and still wasn't given the keys to the franchise, even though he was their future. When he averaged seven points a game, when has LeBron James never, ever, ever averaged less than 20 points a game? Kobe did it twice. They were both the same age entering the NBA. Chris Child did call it so you see how he does that? That's real slick, right? Uh, LeBron was was starting immediately because he was on the, uh, a terrible Cavs team. Cavs team was so fucking bad uh, during that time, right? They had no choice but to risk starting him. They had nothing to lose. Uh, so if you actually go back, matter of fact, uh, I was watching this YouTube channel. Go subscribe to the case for Kobe Bryant uh, as the greatest. Uh, go subscribe to that YouTube channel. Um, he actually brought out something that I thought about before, but never even used it in the argument. Uh, the Cavs were so bad, they gave up on Chris Mim. And guess where Chris Mim was playing? He was the starting center for the Lakers. Guess how they got LeBron? The Cavs were so bad with Chris Mim as a starter that they gave up on him and they ended up getting LeBron in the draft. That's how bad that's how bad the Lakers were back then. Chris Mim was their starting center and he couldn't even start on the worst team, pretty much the worst team in the league. So now he's talking about fighting. <laughs> I really you call me what you want to, but don't put hands on me. Man, put hands on me. Pray for him right there on the court, the middle of the court. Bless his heart, Lord. The man hit you with a three-piece extra Christian yeah. with no sign, Please. and you want to talk about he got heart? You, you don't think Kobe's a tough guy? I'll the take his tough Yeah, again, he, now he's talking about fighting. Right. rather than Michael Jordan, rather than LeBron, should we get to the best player ever? You could make an incredible argument. Right. But the other guy you mentioned, mm -hmm. the idea that Kobe Bryant even gets to... So, so here goes Nick Wright 
He got a shiny ass suit on. I gotta give him credit. Somebody cleaned him up. Somebody gave him a fresh cut, did his eyebrows, <laughs> fucking did his lips. You know what I'm saying? Uh, make it, uh, put some, uh, put some make, put some good makeup on Nick, man. They clean Nick up, man. <laughs> put that piece of paper on the desk and everything for him. Somebody, somebody did that 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 beard too, man. Man, they they got sharp, man, for this segment. Wow. <laughs> no, it's not like. Oh, 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 no, Karan Butler was very young at the time. Lamar Odom was very young. So when Shaq first left, the, the Lakers were in disarray because they just lost Shaq. They lost a big piece. And they had to, they had gotten younger players back, Nick. The same thing happened when LeBron won, was, was in the league with Brandon Ingram. He was on the same team with Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball. And guess what? He traded them, sir, because he could not fucking win with young players. The league, the, the year they missed the playoffs, the year they're up three one. It's, it's kind of funny how they they don't they give LeBron a pass for that, but kill Kobe when it comes to uh, playing with young talent. So okay, hold on. I was on a team with three one. Okay, yeah, and in the second half of game seven, look at this shit. When they didn't shoot, that wasn't letting you off the hook. Who? That was not, wasn't that Kobe? Uh, again, again. So Kobe, if people forget, before mm -hmm. Powell got there, after Shaq left, three straight years, the right. peak of his prime, mm -hmm. one year they missed the playoffs, back to back He years. was in the most toughest conference in the history of the NBA, right? And they expect him to just pick up where he lost, left off with a completely different team. This is nonsensical. This shit doesn't make, but yet LeBron doesn't make the play in and, and it's excused, right? Right? <laughs> so LeBron doesn't make the play in with two Hall of Famers with Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook. That shit is glossed over. But Kobe's supposed to make the finals with, with Kwame Brown, Smush Parker, and fucking Luke Walton and, and Lamar Odom as the second best player. It's fucking ridiculous. They get bounced in the first round. One of those years, they were the original blue a 3 1 lead. They're up 3 1 on Phoenix in the first round. You're on Phoenix. Take. I am exactly right. So Kobe in game seven is pissed. Again, it's closeout game. He's Won't pissed. You? He's pissed. Shoot the ball in the second half. Right. You are saying he never let guys off the hook. Right. If that's not letting guys off the hook, what is? See. Nick doesn't understand basketball strategy, right? Uh, <laughs> basketball strategy is you're trying to find different ways to beat a team. The way Kobe was going wasn't working. He was scoring a lot of points, but they were losing games. So he was willing to try playmate passing to his teammates to get them involved, to get the offense going. Right now, did he go? Did he make the right decision? Probably not. He probably should have stayed with scoring and trying to bust their ass because he was doing that, right? But they were losing, so it justified him making a change, sir. You can't just go in a scoring match with Phoenix. They were one of the highest offenses during that era, right? And they ushered, they actually ushered in this new era of small ball five. So they, they, they were the best team. They had the best record in the league during those years. Right? So this is Hell of Five Cap. This is the end of uh, episode five, part three. Hell of Five Cap.